Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here, Weather in 5, 5 Days in 5 Minutes. Coming up tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast, it's going to be a special weather podcast because we are going to have as our special guest meteorologist Lee Goldberg from WABC-TV in New York. So do join us at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time. Should be a fun night uh, with Lee Goldberg. Okay, uh, not much going on. It's obvious that the weather in the east is beautiful. It's obvious that the weather in the west is not so beautiful. Things have gotten a little calmer across California for the most part. Uh, the extreme rains are done, but we still have some things going on there. And you can see that there's a, a mix of winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings up in the southwestern part of the U.S. And also uh, further north, up to Montana. Uh, and we have uh, an area of winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings as well. But at least for the east, it's looking good. We are still uh, coming off the effects of this omega block that we've been in uh, that has kept high pressure sort of pinned along the eastern seaboard. You can see the uh, centers of high pressure on the latest surface analysis from Maine down into Pennsylvania. Uh, so that's holding things firm as far as dry weather and sunshine is concerned. And once uh, the ocean storm that's well out to the east pulls away far enough, that's going to allow this high to slide eastward and will begin to warm things up. Meanwhile, you can see in the west, there's a mess of things going on. Low pressure off the coast of Oregon, another low in central Colorado. We've got a stationary boundary that's uh, moving through uh, the northern plains where it's a little colder on the northern side of this and warmer on the southern side but there's still an absence of true arctic air uh, in the united states and that's going to continue for a while yet meanwhile uh, the satellite is nice and clear up and down the eastern seaboard the subtropical jet continues to shoot moisture up across west texas and then on up into the plains and northern rockies and since not much is really moving all that that means is that what's out here is also going to continue for a while. Quiet radars in the east, busier radars out in the west, uh, seeing uh, some snow up in Montana. You can see some uh, steadier rain. Uh, today it's in northern California from San Francisco northward, just some leftover showers in southern California after the record rains there, and some patchy areas of snow in parts of Arizona, as well as on up into uh, Utah, and into western portions of Colorado. WPC's uh, precipitation forecast, and this takes us through next uh, Wednesday night, has a half an inch of liquid, uh, melted uh, liquid, uh, up to about New York City and to Boston. Uh, lower amounts up to the north. Uh, I think we'll probably see those uh, liquid amounts go up as uh, we get a little closer to the early part of next week. Uh, we're seeing an area of an inch and a half to some two and a half inch rain amounts from East Texas eastward to southwestern North Carolina, and that's going to be with the weather system uh, over the weekend. And uh, precipitation is diminishing in terms of the forecast, though it's still there with areas of a half inch to an inch uh, possible in parts of California uh, and also in the rest of the southwest and also into the northern Rockies and on up into the Pacific Northwest. All the snow continues to be in the western U.S. as we have a fairly large area where the probability for at least two inches uh, covers a lot of geography from Montana and northwest North Dakota, southward uh, through the central and southern Rockies, and then west uh, through Arizona and into the Sierra Nevadas and parts of the Cascades uh, on the west coast. And as far as the long range is concerned, this is the uh, probability for at least a few inches, and this sets up for Monday into Tuesday, and WPC has indicated another one of these systems that could wind up being more of an inland uh, snow event uh, rather than a, a coastal uh, event. Uh, that's uh, the way they've played out so far, and it's hard to see how this one is going to be any different. And I just want to show you uh, the upper air uh, from last night, because this is when I saw this last night, I thought, okay, here we are 144 hours away from an event, and the models are showing what looks like uh, a, a almost uh, perfect upper air setup in the east that would bring snow uh, to coast and inland places. And if you'll notice, uh, there is a vigorous upper low in Arkansas, and that upper low holds its identity while there's a northern stream feature that comes into play. and 
this winds up uh, producing what would have been would be a, sa a sizable snow event, not just for inland areas, but even for coastal areas to, from, say, New Jersey on up into New England. The problem with this is that the models love to do this uh, when we're in the longer range, out six, seven, or eight days away, and then things kind of get uh, a, a little flatter, uh, at least when it comes to that southern shortwave, and that's what today's models are indicated. And I have to quite frankly think that that is the more likely scenario here, and a setup like this would favor some snows for uh, inland areas, say north of Route 84, for example. Uh, would be probably a good dividing line for where we would see accumulating snows. And that's that's kind of where I'm leaning with this. Uh, this is uh, I know there's been a lot of talk uh, all over the place when it comes to uh, social media with regards to the, these sorts of storms, and they oftentimes start 10 days out and beyond. Uh, now, it's not to say that the upper air can't change again. It certainly could, but uh, I have to kind of go with the trend as your friend idea. and. This year, they've all been wanting to trend inland anyway, so I don't see why this one is going to be uh, any different. And we really don't have a lot of cold air ahead of this. It's all really behind it. Uh, so that's another uh, notch against, you check another box in the not going to be a coastal snow event. But you know, again, I always have an open mind with these things. But in the meantime, uh, the weather is great here in the eastern part of the United States. That's going to continue uh, into, into it through Friday. Uh, the old California storm is going way up to the north in Canada, so we're not going to see much of anything out of that other than maybe a few clouds coming in from time to time on Friday, but it should still be a nice day. And, of course, tomorrow's going to be wonderful with temperatures in the upper 40s to around or just over 50. We'll be in the 50s on Friday, and I think we could be 50s to near 60 on Saturday. This is when we could bring a cold front through with a chance for showers maybe later Saturday afternoon and evening. Sunday right now and Monday looks dry. Then here comes this next storm system, and you can see the low uh, in western Tennessee going into northern West Virginia. Uh, it's going to redevelop just to our south and east. And you can see that most of the models pin that uh, low very close to the coast, which means uh, accumulating snows would be mostly inland. And then the low deepens as it moves away. After that, we'll probably turn somewhat colder as we move through next week. Nothing crazy cold but uh, somewhat colder uh, as we move through uh, all of next week. So, again, don't forget tonight, folks, at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time on my YouTube channel, uh, the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast with special guest, WABC-TV meteor meteorologist Lee Goldberg. We will see you then. And by the way, the chat board is open uh, for those of you who would like to jump in early and talk about all of this. Uh, so the chat board is open. Uh, just go to the link of the, go to my YouTube channel and then go to the upcoming show link and log in and with your Gmail account and you're on your way. We'll see you tonight.